Hi, I'm Owen Astrakhan. Uh, I'm the PI on the Computer Science Principles Project, a professor at Duke. I'm very excited to be with you here today to talk a little bit about computer science principles and the project that you all are part of and that we've been working on. And I'm Brooke Osborne. I am the high school program manager at Code.org. Before I joined Code.org, I was the pilot outreach coordinator for the CS Principles Project. So I've worked with Owen and also with Jeff Gray, who is running this MOOC that you're a part of right now. And like Owen said, we're really excited to give you some background on the project. So just a quick overview of what we're going to cover in this video. We're going to start off by talking about some of the history and motivation for how the CS Principles Project came to be and talk a little bit about the, the course structure and the curriculum framework that's been developed by the College Board with the help of many, many, many community members from across the computer science education community. Um, then we're going to talk about some existing programs that span across the country and have hundreds of teachers participating in them. Um, and those are programs that deal with both curriculum and professional development for the CS Principles um, course and assessment. And then we're going to talk about the future, so sort of where things are going from here and how development's going to work moving forward. So I'm going to get off by, I'm going to start off by telling you a little bit about the history and motivation that led to the development of the CS Principles course. So back in 2009, uh, the College Board sort of did away with the second AP Computer Science course. And for a long time, there were two APCS courses. And for an even longer time, we have had some, some issues with, with participation from um, students of color and women. So uh, really one of the big goals for CS Principles was to think about how we can engage a broader audience of students and how we can do that in a really systemic way. So rather than just trying to recruit more students of color and recruit women, we wanted to build a course that from the beginning really represented a new way of thinking about and exploring computer science. So um, that's that's kind of how the door was opened for this project. And then the first step to make that happen was to engage community members. And as Brooke points out, the uh, opportunity to create this course from first principles was pretty exciting. In 2009, when NSF and College Board got together and said, hey, let's imagine a new course that might be broadly accessible. Ten people came together. Those included high school teachers, college professors, members of CSTA, uh, the executive director of CSTA, people from the ACM, and people from Exploring Computer Science who had already started a program that was intended to be equitable and broad in participation. And all those groups got together, all those people got together, and created a curriculum framework that we're going to talk about later in this talk to broadly engage all students across all demographics and interest to take a computer science course, in this case an AP course, as then what may, might be their only course, might be one of several courses. And that started in 2009 and continued through 2012. We're going to talk about the outcome of that effort, which was a curriculum framework that was revised during different piloting of that. And that group now continues in a different way. Brooke's going to talk about how the pilot group used the initial curriculum framework to help mold that and, and create the framework that you're going to have as part of this MOOC. Yeah, so one of the really important characteristics and features about this program has been that the College Board has been working directly with both university and college faculty, as well as high school teachers, who are using all of these resources and all of these course pieces in their classrooms to sort of see how viable they are. So um, starting back in 2010 and running all the way up to now, we've been doing pilots with teachers who are using the curriculum framework, who are using the assessment pieces that the College Board ho hopes to move forward with. And the goal there is really to refine them and make them documents and, and pieces that can really be used by students and also really be used by teachers. So making sure that, that the language is appropriate, that everyone understands um, what's being asked of them and, and that the asks themselves are really appropriate and are capturing what we want to capture. So that process has been going on for the past four academic years and is going to continue all the way up until the first offering of, of the course in a national way in 2016, 2017. And that's, what, that's when it's going to be a formal AP course with an assessment at the end and everything like that. And the, the outcome of these pilots has been re a revision of the curriculum framework, and we'll talk a little bit about that in this video and then more in a subsequent video, but also the assessments that we'll, that we'll speak about generally here. Once the original group developed that, the, that process is now taken over because this is now an official AP course. 
by an AP Principals Development Committee. That's seven people, high school and college. They develop the course outline that we'll talk about briefly here in a timeline. They also develop the assessment. They help develop some of the professional development that we'll speak of. And there's an additional advisory panel that consists of learning scientists, uh, people that are that are assessment experts that help oversee the process to make sure that it's kind of on track to broaden participation and to be uh, have a valid assessment that's part of it. So this curriculum framework that folks have been working on for the past many years um, is, is something that, as Owen mentioned, we're going to talk about in detail in the next video, but I want to sort of give you a high-level overview about how that curriculum framework is structured and the pieces of the framework. Um, and the reason it's important to think about this and understand this is because the the College Board programs that are part of AP aren't a specific course. The College Board does not uh, release specific course material that everyone must include in their course. Instead, it's this framework of topics that you need to cover. And so since there's this framework that has key characteristics that, that identify student learning objectives and identify essential knowledge statements and, and really break down these big sort of big ideas from computer science into specific topics to cover, um, that still leaves a lot of room for different interpretations and different ways of structuring that and different ways of teaching it. So what we end up having is a lot of different kinds of courses. And, and the program that you're participating in right now with, with this MOOC is a collection of some of those resources and ideas from a particular version of this course. But there are many, many, many different resources that are available to you as a teacher and then also programs that sort of build around curriculum and professional development that, that support the curriculum framework. That's, that's one of the exciting things about how AP works in general and how computer science principles works specifically. There may not be one implementation of this course that works well everywhere. Different districts have different things that are important to them. Different states uh, have different constraints. So I'm just going to mention a few of the NSF and other funded projects that are both developing courses and specific curricula that you can use in your school and professional development. The, these are some NSF funded ones. Jeff Gray in Alabama has an NSF funded project. Lori Pollock in Delaware. Dan Garcia, Brian Harvey, and Tiffany Barnes have the beauty and joy of computing that is not centralized in one place but has participants from all over the country. Calvin Lynn and Bradley Beth use Project Engage is their project in Texas. Marie Desjardins is in Maryland. Beth Simon and Diane Baxter are primarily in California and now have an, an outreach program in Ohio. And Ralph Morella, Mar Morelli and Chinma Uche have the mobile CS program that's in Connecticut and, Mar and Massachusetts, but also has representatives all over the country. There are also non-NSF funded programs that have an extensive course and professional development associated with them. Project Lead the Way, which is engineering and, and across many different parts of the curriculum, but they have a specific computer science principles project. And then Code.org is going to have a computer science principles professional development and curriculum that they develop and release for everyone to use as well. And a really key feature of all of the programs that Owen just mentioned um, is that many of them have uh, resources that they make available online. So, you know, Owen mentioned the locations where a lot of these are sort of based. Um, and in some cases, the, the efforts of the, of the program and of the grant are, are centralized to that location. But even when that's the case, there are many, many, many instances where either the full curriculum or many resources from it are available online. So I would encourage you, even if you're not in a state that Owen mentioned or in a location that Owen mentioned, you still check out those programs because they have a ton of resources online. And at the end of this talk, we'll tell you about the websites that have pointers to all these projects uh, and from which you can find which ones have materials that are available for everyone to use and which ones might be just for the people in those states. That we're going to show you a map that includes about three or 400 people that have expressed an interest in computer science principles by filling out a form on csprinciples.org, which is one of the websites we'll mention at the end. And that's a tiny fraction of the people that we know are interested in this course. There are 700 of you that have signed up for Jeff Gray's MOOC, which is a pretty exciting outcome. And we, we know that there must be many more than have signed up for that that are interested in this. And that's one of the things that makes this poised for pretty good success. There's so many people interested in a new approach to teaching computer science that makes it very exciting. 
So we've talked a little bit up to now about the curriculum framework and some of, some of the specific examples of programs that are implementing that framework as, as built out curricula with professional development. Um, another really key feature of this program is the CS Principles Assessment. So all AP programs have an end of course assessment and um, those those assessment formats range depending on on the kind of um, the kind of course you're in and the kind of coursework that that's sort of appropriate. And there are some really exciting features about the assessment for CS principles, which is still in development and will be available nationally for the first time in 2016, 2017. Um, so one exciting feature is that the whole thing that, that students go to sit for will be computer based. And the reason that's powerful is because it really changes the kinds of questions that you can ask. So rather than just bubble in multiple choice, pick the right answer kind of questions, you could have interactive questions. You could have questions where students first watch some sort of animation and then have to break down what they saw into parts and, and problem solve. And so, so there are lots of different new kinds of things we can ask and new kinds of, of knowledge that, that we can really get at and, and have students demonstrate with this new format for the assessment. So um, the these fixed response questions, even though they will all be computer based, um, they, they only represent one part of the, the eventual assessment that will exist for this course. There's also a whole section of performance tasks, which we're going to talk about in depth in a second video. Um, but we do want to give you an overview of those tasks here. So the idea behind the performance tasks is to allow students to take control of their own learning and demonstration of knowledge by picking topics that are interesting to them. So um, they're still going to be covering learning objectives and, and essential knowledge statements from the curriculum framework. They're gonna demonstrate knowledge but they're going to do it in a way that's interesting to them. So, so they're going to go through three different performance tasks but have the agency to choose the area of exploration for all three of those. And one pretty exciting thing about these performance tasks is that two of them actually require students to work together to collaborate on creating both programs and infographics or part of reports that they're going to do to talk about the, the three areas that they're exploring. And we'll talk more about these in a subsequent video, but just to give you a quick preview, there are th the three tasks are called investigate, explore, and create. Create is using programming to explore on topic, that, again, as Brooke pointed out, that you find interesting. So instead of saying you must do a specific thing, students can find an area that they're interested in pursuing and explore that in more depth. They also have to do the one that they do by themselves is called explore, where they find a current innovation in computing and investigate that, create a digital artifact associated with it, and a report that kind of explores it in more detail, again, making sure that they're responsive to the learning objectives. And then there's one about data where they find a large data set, collaborating again with a partner and ask questions that they format themselves. So they, they find the data set, they find the questions that are of interest to them and use that to create these artifacts that they'll turn in as part of the assessment that will give them a grade. So now you have a, a little bit of an idea of the curriculum framework that currently exists, the assessment pieces that currently exist and are continuing to be developed. We want to give you sort of a snapshot of what's coming in the future. So um, over the next couple of months moving into the summer, we are going to be working with the development committee to revise the curriculum framework. And again, all of this revision that we're going to be talking about is based on the work that teachers who are using these materials in their classrooms have done and the feedback that we've gotten based on that work. So a revised curriculum framework will be available this summer, the summer of 2014, and revised performance tasks will be released in, in the coming year, so 2014, 2015. And that's all going to be based on how those tasks have been used in the classroom, what sort of feedback we've gotten from both students and teachers. The uh, sample questions that you can use to kind of get an idea of what Brooke talked about that aren't just multiple choice, but that leverage the power of making a computer-based exam, those will come out sometime in 2015. The, the development committee is working on those now. And then the course description that gives a more careful explanation of what the curriculum framework is about, including some sample questions, will lead to an audit. All AP courses require that teachers submit a syllabus to go through an audit process, and that will be done in the academic year 2015-2016. 
during this whole time frame, there will be professional development opportunities like the one you're engaged in now in this MOOC done by this group and many other groups. Luckily, both the National Science Foundation and many nonprofits are stepping up and for-profit companies like Google, for example, are stepping in to fund these professional development efforts to make sure that we can reach as many teachers as possible. And then the exam itself will be released and taken by students for the first time in the academic year 2016-2017. And then there are a couple of websites that we would encourage you to check out to get more information about um, the programs we've talked about here, the curriculum framework that we discussed, and the, some of the sample assessment pieces. So if you go to csprinciples.org, that's a great way to see all of the materials, many of which are still in draft form. So, you know, this process has been really as open as possible and in, in showing all of, the, all of the material as it's being developed by the College Board. So there are draft versions of a lot of those materials we talked about. And then the CS10K community, which you can reach at cs10kcommunity.org. That's a place where all of the NSF funded projects that we mentioned before, they all have a space there. Some of them have, um, have a, a purely external presence. So there's, there's lots of public stuff to be seen. Some of it is more internally focused, but it's a great place to go and learn more about those projects, figure out if you can become involved in them if you're interested and check out some of their resources. So we really encourage you to check out both of those videos and to come back and visit us to learn more about the performance tasks and about the curriculum framework. So thanks so much for joining us. Again, I'm Brooke Osborne. And I'm Owen Astrakhan. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye. Bye.